Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Oddville, which is a very, very neat little card-based city building game all about players building communally the town of Oddville. You know, a bit, a bit which is going to be built out of all these wonderfully illustrated cards. And I'm going to be doing a two-player run-through today, demonstrating how it works. And like always, if you notice anything that seems wrong or amiss, you know, maybe something I, I've gone off the rail somewhere, be sure to check the show notes you know, on, you know, of the video because chances are it's already been noted as an error. And so you can find out what's what and how it really should have happened. Always a good idea to check the show notes in case I get any rules wrong. What? Me get rules wrong? Crazy. All right. Let's get going. Let's play through Oddville. So now at the beginning of the game, the only part of the city that's been built is the town square, which you'll notice has roads going out the west, the east, and the south. And, there's, and what we're going to do is we are going to draft cards and get the resources we need to build these cards, wood, clay, stone, and crystal, and build them. And they all have to expand off of existing cards, as you might imagine. There's only two rules when building. You have to match up roads to roads. So come here, you. It's so like this building could not go here, but it could go there. And also, this uh, the town square which we start out with, kind of represents the north wall. You cannot build north of the town square. You can only build west, east, and south of the town square. Those are the only rules for building, so let's start building. Oh, actually, no, before we start building, um, in reverse player order, I'm the first player, so Jen will go first, everybody gets one free resource of their choice before the game starts. And since Jen's last, she gets to choose first. And what does she want? Well, if she looks around at what there is to build, Buildings basically further to the left are effectively cheaper to grab. So if Jen wants to try to grab one of these cheaper ones, this takes two stone. So she could get one free stone, but then subsequent, you know, trying to grab stone would, it could potentially cost her money, which we don't have. This guy requires a clay and a um, crystal, and it would give her access to the white guild, which would give her which special power? Oh, that's a nice special power. Jen might want to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jen likes that. Oh, she really wants to build this building now. That's a really nice combination of stuff off this building. But she needs two stone. But what the heck? She's going to take a stone. So this is her first move. She's grabbing a stone for free. And now I, as the first player, I get to pick one, but I can't take stone. So I can take crystal, clay, or wood. And I got to think about what do I want to build? Let's see here. And, well, I can see Jen's already gotten stone. So. And I can't take stone, so going for this building is probably not going to be that easy because stone's kind of expensive. This one requires three things, so getting all three of those resources could be tricky as well. This one only requires two resources. So you know what? I think I'll go ahead and grab crystal because both of these require crystal. And crystal is usually the toughest to get, although not necessarily, but it, it tends to go that way. So we'll see how it works out. So before the game started, Jen grabbed a free stone, I grabbed a free crystal, and now we are ready to start playing. Mm. So I will go first after having a drink of water. So here we go. Uh, everybody has, at the beginning of the game, nine of these little markers. And these markers represent your resources, by the way. Um, I have one crystal. Jen has one stone. Okay, and then I've got eight more that I could play. So what am I going to do? I, everybody starts with these four cards, and they are on a scale of weakest, wussiest, most useless guy to knight in shining armor, super awesome guy. Because whichever one, I'm going to play one of these cards now, because on your turn, you either play a card or you build a building. I don't own any buildings yet, so I can't build them, so I'm going to have to play a card. If I play this guy, I have a choice. He could get me three bucks, one of any resource, or any of the first four buildings, one, two, three, four, for free, this one would cost one and this one would cost two. And I remember, I don't have any money. On the flip side, the Mr. Surf over here, my uh, lowly guy, he can't get me any money. He can only collect wood. And if I use him, only the first building is free and all the other ones cost one, two, three, four, or five bucks. And then these other two guys are kind of in between. You know, one buck, two buck, two resources, three resources, first two buildings free, first three, four. So anyway, I got to play one of these and then either get money, resources, or a building. And now I know I want to build that building. And so should I go on ahead and, play, and you know, I could just play my worst guy because he'd be able to get me that building, no problem. But I know I need three resources to build that thing. And right now, if I try to grab wood or clay, or if I try to grab any of the resources, they're free. Because the first, oh, well, I mean, I'll explain that in a minute. But you know, there's kind of a, a land grab for resources. So I wonder if I should grab resources first. 
Huh, let's see. Well, I've got my crystal. If I want to build this, I know I need clay and wood. So, you know what? I think so. I think I will go on ahead and play this dude. I will play this card. And I've got a choice. One buck. I could, or he could gather wood, or he could gather clay, or he could get me one of the first two for free, or I could pay for those. Although, I, again, I have no money. I'm going to use him to get some clay. Because you can see I need clay in addition to the crystal and the wood. Now, here's the thing about that clay. Whenever you put a guy down, you put him into the cheapest space possible. And now this is the two-player side of the board. You could flip this for the three and four, so there's more spaces. But in the two-player side of the board, there's a free space, there's a space that costs one buck, and there's a space that costs two bucks. Now, any number of players can go into the space that costs two bucks. That's where both Jens and my freebies came from. But I'm going to come here to the free space, and that means I've just gotten clay for free. So I've got crystal, clay, and now I just need the wood, and I'll be able to build this thing. All right, so now it is Jens' first turn. She is going to... Now, I'm even going to think about it. She's going to play her third best guy, because this guy can collect um, stone, and she's so happy. If I had come over here to collect stone, then for Jen to collect stone, well, remember, she needs two stone, it would have cost her a buck, which she doesn't have. Fortunately, I came over for clay. So Jen's going to use this guy, who can get wood, clay, or stone. She's going to get some stone. And now she's got the two stones she needs to build that church, or whatever it is. Okay. Oh, Dob, you are snoring up a storm. I don't know if folks can hear that. Oh, she stops now, of course, when you figure. Anyway, though, so back to me, back to my turn. Let's see. So I'm going to send out my little surf weak guy because he can't do much, but he can get wood. And now I've got all three of the things I need to, to build that building, although I haven't grabbed it yet. And so now it's Jen's turn. And now the interesting thing is, Jen can see I can build that building. If she wanted to, she could send out her little weak guy and snag it right out from underneath me. And then I would have grabbed all those resources for nothing. Although, of course, I'll use those resources on other stuff. But Jen, she's got something else in mind. She's going to send out her second best guy because he has access to the first two buildings for free. And so Jen just grabbed this church, which she'll be able to build with her two stone. All right. And now back to me. Oh, and then whenever you grab a building, all the other ones slide down, becoming cheaper, and a new one comes out. Now I'm going to send out... My next best guy, he could get me any three of these, but I want this one because this is the building I like. Although, and he could get me any three. And I could build this one too. And this one gets me the White Guild. The White Guild lets me get um, resources. Well, the interesting thing is, oh, that's really interesting. See, Jen, she's about to build a building that's going to get her in good with the White Guild. If she builds this, and then afterwards, I, if she builds this, she will get... The, uh, what's it, the lamp lighter. Every time you play, there's different ones that come out. There's a whole bunch of additional guys, it could be. But every time you, you know, so Jen could get the lamp lighter for building this thing that makes the White Guild happy. If I right afterwards build this, then I will end up making the White Guild happy and I'll get to take this away from her and I'll get that power. So that's really interesting. But on the other hand, going back to the one I've been thinking about building, this one, if I build this, this is worth two points to me at the end of the game, plus one additional point for every green guild building. So it's really worth three points, because this is a green guild building, plus additional ones. There's another green building right here. So if I build this, and then I build this, this will start making this get more valuable. So I think I will stick with my original plan. I'm going to go on ahead and grab this, even though I could grab one of the other ones. Okay. And so that was that. And now, Jen is going to build this thing. Now, when you build, you, don't, that's, you take a break from playing your cards. Instead, you build the building. And so Jen's going to build this thing. And remember, she has to pay attention to roads, so she can't go... She could go like this, or she could go like this. Let's see. Now, that is an interesting choice. Because the benefit Jen gets from this, for, she'll get in good with the White Guild. She'll also get some clay. But this thing... This building itself will not score her any points. But what it does is, every building that's built adjacent to it that scores points will double. So by building this here, you know, because Jenna put a marker on it to indicate this is hers, it means that this thing is currently worth four points. If Jen can build other high score buildings on the other side, this thing could be worth 16, 20 points. So the interesting thing is, if Jen puts it here, remember, she cannot build to the north. So that's one less space that she could build adjacent. So that's why I think she's going to build it down there. Because then she has a chance to build more high-scoring buildings around it. Okay, so now to build this, Jen needs two stones. So she pulls these two guys off, and they bring the stone back from the quarry. So that's how she got her stone. She puts one of them here to indicate that that is her building. 
um, for the rest of the game, it will you know it's hers, nobody else's, and it will score her points at the end of the game. Now she also gets more stuff. Because she's built this, she, as I said, she gets the white guild, which is the lamplighter, although in different games it could be other guys, like the traveler and uh, somebody else. And this guy gives her a new special power. If Jen is still holding this card at the end of the game, she scores two bonus points. And from now on, well, actually, before I talk about what this power does, let me uh, explain more. So Jen built this thing. She is going to get one clay now. So she, and it, you know, even though normally to get clay would cost her a buck, she gets that clay for free. But now, whenever you build, not only do you get the, the immediate reward of the building you built, but if you're, uh, if you're connected to buildings by roads like this, you get that reward as well. So Jen also gets something uh, of any resource of her choice. So she can get, um, well, she can get another clay if she wants, or she could get anything. And currently getting wood would cost her a buck. So I think, what's her next thing going to be? Let's see here. Yeah, I think her next thing will be to get some wood and save her a buck. So she just got some resources. Now, because this one, these were connected by roads, she got to activate this. Normally, say, you know, if, if she builds this, um, you know, this is legal because there's no roads connecting these things, but you will notice that Jen gets no, um, you know, she gets this reward, but they're not connected by roads. However, this guy says you get the reward even when there's no road connecting. So that gives Jen a lot more flexibility for building, basically. Although the problem is she wants to put high level, like, you know, three, four, five point buildings next to this thing so she can score them. Right now, they're all lobies. There's one, two, one, etc. So she's going to be on the lookout for some high value buildings that she can build into these spots. And meanwhile, me, I want to build low-value buildings next to the thing to minimize the amount of points Jen can get off of it. But anyway, she built a building, she got some bonus resources, and now it is my turn again. And I have the resources I need to build this, so what the heck, yeah, let's, let's get her done. Let's get this thing built. So, uh, it takes my wood, my clay, and my crystal, and now i got to put it someplace. Now I can't put it here because of the roads. I can't put it here. See, I, I wouldn't mind putting this next to Jen's thing because then it's only a two-pointer. So it's really kind of minimizing how many points she could score off that thing. But I can't do it because of the roads. <gasps> oh my gosh, wait a minute. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, I can. I can. I could. The only place, I, in fact, I can build it is here. Because this is legal because there's no roads on either side. I couldn't build it here because of the road issue. So I have to build it there. And so that means I've given Jen two points, but I've also blocked a space that she, it could have been worth like four or five points or something like that, depending on what building she built there. So I'm giving Jen two points to build this thing, unfortunately. But let's go on ahead and do it anyway. So I've built it. I get one stone, which is free anyway, so that's not that exciting. And because this thing is not connected to any roads, I don't get any adjacent other bonuses, but I do get in good with the green guild. And now that means... If I'm holding this at the end of the game, it's worth two points. And as long as I'm holding this, if Jen ever has to pay money for anything, one of those bucks comes to me because he is the tax collector. All right, so there we go. So I built that, and that was my turn. And so now, and um, all things considered, actually, I'm in the lead because I've got three points, two plus one, and Jen's only got two points. So right now I'm in the lead, um, although Jen's got more resources than me. We both have equal number of points from our in-game bonuses. Um, Jen's got more cards to play, and that's where we are. If you'd like to watch some more, because uh, the game's just barely started, but I think you get the basic idea. You use these things. Oh, crap, the one thing I haven't shown you is getting these cards back, because the interesting thing is once all these cards are gone, you don't have any more cards to play. Anytime you want on your turn, you can pay money to call these cards back. If I wanted to get, the, if I desperately, desperately, desperately wanted to get a crystal right now. Oh, no, no, let's see. Oh, actually, it doesn't really matter. I wouldn't call any of these guys back because I've still got my best guy. Let's look at Jen. If, nope, Jen's got her best guy. Well, you know what? If you want to see about guys calling back, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes to watch the extended playthrough where I'll demonstrate how that works. Alternatively, you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.